Hello there everybody, this is Graham, also known as The Collector 75 and welcome back to another comic showcase. Um, right, for this one I thought I'd go back and, well, right back in time in fact to some of the comics that got me into collecting American comics. Uh, the last time I believe I showed you a lot of Batman comics because that was uh, probably the initial one that grabbed my attention but then obviously went down the news agents and I saw that they'd done a whole host of others including Green Lantern which I did show a few before but I did forget to show you um, my Green Lantern Rebirth comics but never mind. Uh, yeah so anyway uh, the other one that grabbed my attention down the old local news agents was um, I saw a load of old Superman comics and I picked them up and started reading them I was quite interested it was the old um, Exile from Earth I think it was about uh, Adventures of Superman roughly around Four, four, 4.30 maybe, 4.50, I can't remember exactly where it was, but uh, I kind of don't even know what the reason why he got exiled, I th that was just before I started reading, but it was quite an, um, interesting then, but then it sort of like, it got a bit boring and I couldn't be bothered to read it anymore, but then I got back into it when they announced that they were going to kill off Superman, with the uh, Doomsday story. Which I do have here. This is um this is the one where he died. I'm not going to show the one the previous ones because to be honest, it is literally drawn out because obviously he's just fighting a big monster called Doomsday really, and it doesn't get much that interesting if I'm honest. Um, even the bit where he dies is a bit of a cop out to be honest. It's not like at least Batman was a bit more interesting. Superman, I, I don't know. It just I don't know. It just I mean, how interesting could it get, really? Um, just him throwing punches at a monster that seemed as invulnerable as he is. So there we go. Anyway, this is the one where he died. This I, I, this is the collector's edition. This is the one that came with the cover like a um, gravestone. Absolutely brilliant. It says, "Here lies Earth's greatest hero." As you can see, there's the monster Doomsday, and a good advert for the old WWF there. Um, and as it goes on, he's just defending Metropolis, as you can see, he's getting real beat up by this stage, and Doomsday just seems unstoppable, blah 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 blah, and then they wind up with a punch to sort of like try and take each other out, and that's it, and they basically kill each other, as you can see there, Doomsday's down, and Superman is just about dying, and uh, you have the gatefold cover, and the death of Superman, there we go, and that's about, to be honest, that's about as interesting as that one got. Um, but then we had World Without Superman, that was his, like the funeral and the aftermath of his death. With the uh, collector's edition, it came in this great black bag. I always found that quite ironic that they then put it in a black bag edition. That was brilliant. Um, and I love the um, blood dripping off the Superman logo there. And of course this is the memorial set. There we are. And it shows you what everything it comes with. A Superman 75, a fold out, splash back cover. It comes with a memorial poster. I've got everything here. This is the poster. Um, I can't tell you what it is. I've never really opened it. It doesn't seem that interesting, to be honest. Never put it up or nothing. Comes with a uh, Bloodlines. Is it? Or is it the? Oh no, it's not. Well, it's the Death of Superman trading cards anyway. But it's the prototype. Well, it, everyone got one of these, so there's nothing real special about it. Came with some stamps for some unknown reason. Came with a Daily Planet obituary. There we are. But not really too interested in that and probably the best thing in it was of course the black superman armband which you could wear um yeah i never wore mine but i suppose i would have been silly walking down the street with that all right so um from there of course uh, he died and all the comics then ended with um a hiatus of about two or three months with just a few specials of the world of superman without him and then we got adventures of superman 500 where he came back to life with his father um i can't remember his name Oh, that's bad of me, isn't it? But anyway, his dad sort of like basically having a heart attack and then going into the afterlife and trying to bring Superman back, which he did. This was the collector's edition in a white bag this time. Um, didn't come with too much. I never actually opened this because I picked that up at the same time. Uh, just, it just comes with a translucent removable cover, um, and eight, eight extra pages of story, and then a Bloodlines trading card. Yeah, that's what I mean to see. But anyway, he comes back to the afterlife, manages to find him and brings him back. Unfortunately, he doesn't turn up as everyone expected because typical DC decided to give us four new supermen. We have the last son of Krypton, um, the man of steel, the man of tomorrow, and of course the Metropolis Kid, also known as Superboy. Um, the great thing about all these is that, 
Um, let's have a look. If I just turn over two of these, it's got pictures of all four of them on the back. Actually, no. There we go, it's got three of them because the ones that got backing boards. That's Superboy. He was just a, like a clone of Superman and the last son of Krypton, which I actually always thought it was the actual real Superman comeback. Because the way this story was was sort of like laid out was that all of these, apart from uh, Superboy, who just always claimed to be a clone of Superman, so there's no trouble there knowing his origins. We had the Man of Steel, which was a big black guy in a suit of armour, who Superman once saved his life, and then, so he just donned like this metal suit to uh, honour Superman. And um, and so it was really just between these two, because this guy claimed that he had no memory of what happened to him after he died but he came back as like a Kryptonian cyborg which was a great sort of like homage to the Terminator it was, I loved, I loved the man of tomorrow and of course he had the last son of Krypton which was basically, looked exactly like Superman except he had different powers now, he couldn't, he had to wear a visor because his eyes were I don't know, sensitive to light but as it turned out this guy was the Eradicator who had just literally lost all his memories and everything. This guy was actually a phony and he was actually Hank, Hank Henshaw, who Superman once banished from Earth, but he managed to use Kryptonian DNA and he was a... because so he, he basically... it was a great storyline where it first introduced him because it was a great rip-off of the Fantastic Four and he was like the Reed Richards of that group. But he um, gained some power where he had control over all mechanics and everything like that. And he couldn't die, basically. And so he just transferred his consciousness from machine to machine, and it could just transfer, but use Kryptonian DNA to create this cyborg. And then just was then known as the cyborg, and is still going in the DC universe today as a major villain. Um, I love the guy. Um, I even got a, sort of like the DC toy of it, the classic new one anyway. I want to get the, uh, is it the Yellow Lantern suit there? Anyway. And they were the Superman comics, absolutely fantastic stuff. Uh, let's move on quickly. Uh, right, let me move on to uh, some more of what I might call mature readers comics. These were some of the ones that I picked up right when I first started collecting, when I first went to my first comic shop. This is Camelot 3000, and um, these did come out in um, January, was it, December 1982. It was ran for 12 issues, um, supposedly like every, every month, but unfortunately there was, I don't know why, but the final issue is April 1985. That's nearly three years it took to produce this series. Some fantastic art by Brian Boland. And the story is absolutely brilliant. I'm just going to lay out all the issues. There we go. Absolutely fantastic. You can get this in a collected edition, which I bought as well for some reason, because I liked it that much. Absolutely fantastic. If in 1982 they had the Vertigo line of DC Comics, they would, this would have been on Vertigo. Absolutely brilliant. I'll tell you what, every issue is fantastic. It doesn't lose the storyline anywhere. You know, like some stories can have a great start, bit shit, middle, or a good ending, or whatever. This one was just brilliant throughout. Every issue is absolutely readable. I reread this when I got these out of my mum's house um, about a week ago. I was just going to have a quick flick through, but I got hooked on it again and read the whole lot in about, I don't know, two hours, something like that. Fantastic stuff. And it's just got where King Arthur comes back when England needs him most in the year 3000, dealing with an alien threat. Um, but of course it features all the characters from the King Arthur mythology, like Mordred, uh, Morgan Le Fay and everyone like that. Fantastic stuff. If you've never read it, give, give, give it a try. R really good. Like I say, you can't get the issues because I don't know how much these go for now. Um, but the collected edition, it's just worth getting this book about, about ten with that. But definitely well worth picking up. Uh, another one is the Sandman. Um, I never got any of the original comics. I just I, I started collecting it with the Essential Vertigo because all the issues were just way, way, way too overpriced, and there was no way I was going to get them. But then they brought out this as um, an easy way to get people into it, and it, I don't know how much it ran for. I got up to issue thirty because I think I had trouble finding it after. I don't know whether it just got cancelled or whatever. But Brilliant story, it's just um, the Sandman, and he rules the dreaming. Um, brilliant stories. You've, it does help if you are not like a child, because some of the stories can are very wordy, and it's written by Neil Gaiman, who writes some of the best stuff. Um, I've, it's like, what is it, I, I was watching Doctor Who, the new series, the other, I think it was the other series that was on the first half of the series, and to be honest, I was, thought it was quite shit, to be honest, and it seemed more aimed at children. But the episode written by Neil Gaiman, it was probably the best episode of the entire series. He just writes some fantastic stuff. You can't go wrong with that. Um, I'm like I say, I've got up to issue 30. I'm trying to sort of like get the um, graphic novels to finish off the series because it's definitely well worth reading. Um, and then another one I picked up 
when I when I was a comic shop in Staines was Preacher. The guy told me, he goes, oh, you should get issue one. Because obviously when it first came out, and I go, oh, all right. Because I was actually looking for the Invisibles, but I couldn't find it. Um, which would be fine, that's another good series as well, actually. But he said to write, and do you know what? From issue one, I was hooked. It's absolutely fantastic stuff. There is, um, it's guaranteed to offend someone, anyone, no matter what your religion or anything like that. It is absolutely, it is brilliant. And I tell you what, I think the series run for about 70 or 80 issues, something like that. Brilliant throughout. I mean, I was a little bit worried because I stopped collecting it about issue 50 because well, I, I was in a bit of debt and had to stop and had to literally cut out everything. And so I stopped. And, um, and I wasn't that bothered about it because I was losing it a little bit. I was a bit bored of it. Um, but then I picked up a couple of years ago, uh, about a year ago actually, I picked up the um, collected editions just to finish it off. And I thought, well, I'll finish it off, but I wasn't that bothered about it. Started reading it again. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> This is another series just brilliant from all the way, and the characters are brilliant. It's just got Jess Custer, who gets infused with um, the entity called Genesis, which is the offspring of a demon and angel, and gives him the power of the word, which just means that if he tells someone to do something, they have to go and do it. Um, which is great. It didn't rely on that at all. He hardly ever used it. But when he did, it was usually quite nasty. And then Heaven, fearing, the, fearing what that meant, basically, because he was more powerful than God, and God has gone missing from heaven for some reason. The angels decide to dispatch the saint of killers after him. Which is, if you've anyone seen my videos, usually behind me on my wall, I've got a poster of the saint of killers. Uh, fantastic. And he is a, some fucking motherfucker. And then, of course, we've got uh, Jesse's best friend, which just happens to be a vampire. That is a fantastic cover. Um, look at that. That's absolutely brilliant. All the covers were drawn by Glenn Fabry. And uh, you just, you just, honestly, you just cannot go wrong with the series. Give it a try. Brilliant. It, it, it will make it will offend you, it will make you fucking laugh. And the best thing about it is so well written and so readable. Um, like I say, it's under the Vertigo line, so it's obviously for mature readers. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff. Um, I'm tempted just to reread the whole series again, actually, because it is brilliant. And then on to a more fun note. Uh, one of the things that which did, um, which I did like at the time when this came out, this was um, DC versus Marvel because we was always getting like crossovers between like Batman and Punisher and Superman and the Hulk and everyone like that and Batman bloody Spider-Man and whatever. So they just uh, DC and Marvel just decided to collaborate to do because always people like they said people would wonder who's stronger, Superman or the Hulk or whatever. So they decided to do a series where they would answer all those questions and so they produced Marvel versus DC where it just had two parallel Earths. When you find out that basically they shouldn't be intersecting like they do, and it's just sometimes where the realities converge and that allowed sort of like heroes to meet and for some reason or whatever, and and it just had that these were two parallel Earths that should never meet and whatever because they were actually inside these two cosmic beings that were basically a mirror image of each other and that's why you had a load of heroes that were almost the same, almost identical in ways, and they basically then woke up, realised that they were there, and then. Um, pitted all their heroes against each other and the winner would be eliminated well sorry the winner would be victorious and the loser would be eliminated including the, the universe so it was basically who would win Marvel or DC the loser would be obliterated and so then this is uh, what's this one there? oh that's issue two what do? there's issue one and that's issue two there we go I put them in all bloody order so anyway so we got up to these with uh, 11 fights uh, six of which were just wrote, and five of which we could vote on, and I do remember voting myself. Unfortunately for me, because um, I was more of a DC fan than a Marvel fan, uh, Marvel did win, uh, with only Batman and Superman winning their fights, which I could have predicted anyway, to be honest. Uh, but from issue three, instead of um, the actual comic series, Sort of like one universe being eliminated, they decided, and I didn't see this coming because I never heard about this until literally that issue. Um, it just went on to amalgamate the universes instead, and then with like issue four, issue four, like I say, this is just where the um, the universes got separated. They then just done all these issues. It's just brilliant. See, that's, this is a uh, Storm and Wonder Woman was amalgamated into form Amazon, where the DC and Un Marvel universes were just amalgamated into one universe. And it was brilliant. There were some great issues. Most of these were just silly, fun things. Um, this one was quite cool. Bruce Wayne, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I did like that one. You had bullets and bracelets with just the Punisher and Wonder Woman. And um, you got Challenges of the Fantastic, which is, of course, a, 
an amalgamation of Challenge of the Unknown and Fantastic Four. We've got Dark Claw, Batman and Wolverine mixed together. Um, some really good ones. Doctor Strange Fate, the only guy who knew where the universes had come from. And so then uh, was trying to stop the new hero called Access who had the keys to unlock the universes and bring them back together. Uh, so we'll separate them rather. And it was quite a good issue. Um, we've got Generation Hex. Iron Lantern. This was um, this was one of the second series. This is from the second Marvel DC sort of thing called Access All Areas or something like that. And again, the universe has got amalgamated. I just put all these together though, to be honest, because I didn't see the point. It was just their second go at it, really, just for a laugh. And we come up with JLX, which is obviously a mixture of the Justice League and the X Men. And it just really just poked fun at the whole universe. We've got Lobo the Duck, and you got Magneto and the Magnetic Men. And you got Speed Demon, which is obviously Ghost Rider and the Flash mixed together. You got Spider Boy, which is just a complete piss take. Um, it was really good. And then I thought, um, because I think Superboy at the time was always doing these strange team ups. I mean, I even bought, what was it, Superboy and the Ravers? My god, that was a bad comic. Can't even believe I bought that one. But so I think this was just like a piss take out of it, because obviously he teams up with nearly everyone. And it's just quite silly, really. And then you got Super Soldier. That was just a mix of Superman and Captain America. And then you've got the last one, X Patrol, which had my sort of like the... My favourite sort of amalgamation, which is, of course, Doctor Doomsday, because I'm a big Doctor Doom fan. And um, I did like Doomsday, and I just thought they just went together so well. Absolutely brilliant stuff, this. But like I say, not for your serious collector. They are all just sort of like piss takes, really, and just shouldn't work. Um, and so you can and there were some bad issues, but they were just wrote for fun. That's that's what maybe people didn't realize I don't know, but anyway, but I got them because I was well into it. I loved it all um, Right, so this has been one of my comic showcases, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now